Russian Federation today is a de facto fascist state. <laughs> to what fascism is or has been during the 20th century is very similar to fascist Italy or Nazi Germany in the 30s or early 40s as well. The, the similarities are very, very much there. Uh, with a strong leader, with a similar, let's say, ethnically driven uh, national narratives, attacking the neighbors, uh, closing on or any freedoms of the domestic population as well. So everything is there. It's very similar, just with modern technology. Whether there is a strong support for Putin domestically, honestly, we do not know. We see huge portions of the Russian society, Russian leadership supporting the regime at this moment. So there is a huge support among it. It's hard to distinguish which, which of the people are doing it because they're afraid of the regime itself. So they more or less have to do it. Like in countries under Soviet occupation, populations were forced to actually praise the Soviet rulers. So to some extent, it was not, it was not free decision for those people, but at the same time you see many of the Russians leaving. There's hundreds of thousands of Russians leaving Russia because they don't want to live there for political or economic or social reasons as well. But uh, overall, we see that much of Russia actually uh, does not uh, rise up internally. I don't mean a violent revolution, but the, the, the level of protests at the beginning was visible, at the beginning of the new Russian war since February 2022, but the Russian regime has been preparing for such a scenario with domestic security measures as well, and basically clapping it out on the opposition or any rest of the free media which was there. So honestly, Russia is going to the direction of what would be a European North Korea, in a sense of a big country, which will be pretty much devastated economically, it will be closed down from the outside world, something what China or North Korea is pretty good at doing already, and Russia is now trying to do it in a similar way, uh, to actually make sure nobody from the outside can actually have any influence inside of Russia in the future. If you are basically a fascist dictatorship, which Russia is today, you need to motivate your own troops and your own population, because otherwise people naturally do not commit such major war crimes and atrocities just because they are told. They need to have ideological and, let's say, the big reasons for doing it. Uh, sometimes it's economic, sometimes people are basically stealing things because they can and because they are poor in such a situation, but there needs to be a big narrative. The big narrative which Russia actually is giving to its population and to its troops is that basically Ukraine is a non-existing state and does not have a right to exist. And the Ukraine nation is basically fake. That's what Russia is telling dom its domestic audience, also telling it to its troops, also telling it across the region as well, where I think nobody believes that in Europe, but this is what Russia tells domestically. And to a similar extent, again, if you look to late 1930s, early 1940s with Nazi Germany, this is what they were telling to their troops. Not only about the Jews, they were telling it about Central Eastern Europeans as well. They were saying, look, those people are subhuman. We, they are not equal to us, so we could rape them, we could steal from them, we could basically kill them as nations or we could enslave them as nations. And this is basically what Russia tells, it, tells itself, Russian leadership tells it to, to its nation and to its troops, so they could do it in Ukraine. And unfortunately, things like Bucha and similar war crimes and genocidal acts are exactly the result of such, such behavior. And that only tells us how much we need to stop Russia from doing it and punish it, because otherwise they will keep, keep doing it. Because as we speak, there are thousands of Ukrainians dying every week. And that's, impo that's impossible to keep, to, keep, to keep this from going. Because uh, otherwise, uh, what will stop Putin if it's not Europeans and Europeans and Americans together on the economic and military front? Nothing else can stop him.